want to start by congratulating Mike O'Neill and the women's soccer team, uh, Big Ten champions, our first Big Ten championship at Rutgers, and I believe I'm right in saying that. And uh, really, really good. Mike is uh, one of the first people that I saw when I came back here to Rutgers, and he runs a, a, an excellent program, and I'm really excited for him and, and for the ladies there that uh, did a tremendous job. So hats off to them, and, and a big congrats. Um, now we'll get into Illinois. Obviously, the bye week is over, and it's a game week, and uh, looking forward to getting back at it with our team. So with that, I'll answer any questions that uh, you guys have. I know you have a good relationship with Steve. You've talked about that before. But do you uh, ever, like, study, and Steve even Stringer probably comes to mind, but Mike O'Neill, do you study, like, why some programs have success? Do you talk to some of these coaches, to, you know, to see how they tick? We do. Um, you know, during the season, it's hard for me. Last week, I was tempted to go over and watch basketball, and I just got tied up with so many things here with recruiting and our team and obviously coming off that that uh, tough loss. But uh, I do, and I like to, you know, last time I was here, I like to go watch other teams practice. I think that's really cool. We have head coaches calls where we talk and share ideas and stuff, but uh, I like to watch people practice because it doesn't matter what sport. Coaching is teaching, and I love to see different ways that coaches teach. This is different bye week, obviously, last year with the COVID in place. Have you done anything differently during the bye week since your first time around in, in preparing the team and handling things? Well, I think every every year is different, right? Like, you know, I, I see some of these coaches with their coaches' manuals. This is how we do the bye week. Well, how, how do I know how we're going to do the bye week? What's our health? Where are we from a developmental stage? So I, I kind of have a general idea how we'll do it from a recruiting standpoint because it's important that you in, the, in your week where you're – off, especially in our program, that we get a chance to go see the guys we want to see um, and visit with the people we need to visit with. But I think from a practice standpoint, you really have to play it by ear. You know, sometimes you, you end up having a bye week where you bang the whole week. Other times you have a bye week where you're really just trying to get everybody back feeling fresh. I think it depends where it falls and how your team is at the time. What are you seeing from this Illinois team? I'll tell you what, Brett's doing a great job. He's a good friend. He's an excellent football coach. Obviously, he's won Big Ten championships in this league. Um, I thought when he got hired, it was a, tr a great decision. Uh, he's a very, very good head football coach, um, and he'll do a great job there. He is doing a great job there, putting their team together, putting their program together. Um, I see a team defensively that's really tough. They do things that are a little bit different, which I think uh, – talented players big strong and then do some different things that you know give you kind of misreads if you will um, offensively you know they were they were in a format and then last week they did some things that were a little different you know a 7-0 lineman package and really uh, ran the ball really really effectively um, so there's certainly things we have to get ready for they present some issues in the kicking game they're very very good so um, yeah, it's a big challenge going on the road again in the Big Ten, heading out into a different time zone again in the Big Ten. So um, we certainly know what we're up against, and we need to we need to be concerned with us. We went to Northwestern, and, and they beat us, but we didn't play well. And we have to make sure we at least go play our best, and then if that's good enough, great. And if it's not, we'll figure out another way. Um, but when you don't, when you did what we did, then uh, you really you gotta you gotta get it going. Do you feel like you are healthier after the bye week? Yeah, in some ways. Um, you know, I think we're, we're trending in the right direction. But, um, you know, some of the things that we've had are a little longer term stuff. Um, but we'll get some guys back as well. So it's going to be a little this, a little that. Are there any of those guys who have been banged up the last couple of weeks that are not going to return this season? For the season? For the season. Yeah, other than Reggie Sutton right now, he's the only guy for the whole season. Now, that could change, right, if a guy's condition doesn't improve the way we anticipate. What I ask our medical staff to do for me all the time is give me a best, worst, a best case and a worst case. And this way, at least I know where we're dealing, somewhere in between. Um, right now, none of the worst cases are the whole season except Reg. 
I guess just from what you can gauge, I mean, what have you kind of seen from the players from the bye week and now going into this game week against Illinois in terms of where their head's at at this point in the season, how they handled the bye week, and, and kind of where everything is at this point? Well, I think, you know, as I talk to the players, and I think it's important that everybody, we all understand it, is we're now going into our eighth week and we still have the chance to write the story for the 2021 season however we see fit, right? We have five ball games left, starting with this one this week, and it's in our hands, right? We can have a very successful season, or we cannot, and it's all up to us. So if, if anybody wants to talk about anything going on, other play, it doesn't matter. It's up to us. It's what happens in this room, out on those practice fields, and we have to make it happen. And that, that excites me. You know, it, it, we're heading into November, and we still have a, an opportunity to do something special. And uh, it's been a while for that around here, and, and that excites me. Now, what we do with it is going to make the difference, right? That's, that's the key. This is your first trip to Illinois since the infamous CHOP game. I think you've told a story before. I came up with it on the flight home, right? And yeah. then you told the team you bought had a GA by the Red Axe, right? Yep. Two-part. Uh, what do you think about that? You know, at any point, you know, when you when you go out there, and then the second part, do you still have that red axe? Was that the one that was hanging above the elevator in the health center for a while? Do you still have the red axe? <laughs> I don't know, Keith. That's a great question. I'm, you know, that, that it's the more of the figure than the actual axe itself, but it may very well be. I got to ask Gilk that. Gilk's in charge of that stuff. I don't, I don't know, but I do remember carrying that axe in that door right there, and it still being wet. Right, they went and got it at, at wherever they got it, and then they brought it to the machine shop, and whoever was in there painted it, spray painted it red for us. And I remember afterwards having red paint on my hands, but it was uh, <coughs> it was fitting, and uh, certainly you know something that I had heard years before, and it fit the situation then. <coughs> Excuse me. What was the other part of the question? Yeah, that was it. I was okay. Basically, will you think about it when, when you go out there? And then, I don't um, know. I'm not. As I've said to you many times, I really, uh, I really try to focus on the task at hand. I'm not that sentimental. So had you not brought it up, I probably wouldn't have. Um, but um, yeah, the last time I was in that stadium, we lost a tough ball game. So we gotta, we gotta try not to do that. I know last year was different because they had an option style quarterback and everything. When Illinois has run the ball so well against Rutgers for years now. Do you look back at all of those games and try to find a common line? I know coaches have changed, coordinators have changed, but a lot of the players are still the same. No, I think it's changed that much. Yeah, I mean, what what they ran last year, unless they make another total shift, which they could do. I mean, they still have him on the roster, right? But that's not really what they've set out to be. And I, and I think, and it could be wrong, but I think Brett's building a program, not a season. And I think he's trying to establish the things they do. You know, that isn't something, what he did at, at Penn State last week, that's not the first time Brett Bielma's coach teams have done that. So that's been seen before. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it really was effective for him. We better be ready for it or it'll be effective again. Greg, over the past few weeks, the offense has seen a couple struggles here and there. A couple of fans have taken to Twitter to criticize Sean Gleason's play calling at times. And of course, fans will be fans, but how would you grade his play calling so far this year? No, I think Sean's doing a very good job. I think we have to, we have to coach it better. We have to execute it better. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, Sean's an excellent coach, and he has good plans. I think his feel on game day is very good. I have the utmost confidence. Um, once the calendar starts getting at this point of the year, there's a feeling that in the Big Ten you have to run the ball, and your team hasn't. Illinois, the other team that, that you're facing, has been running the ball effectively. Um, I guess, you know, how big of a challenge is it to stop their running game, you know, in, in a game like this? And then how do you get your own running game to, to, to start producing a little bit better? Well, I think our own running game, we need to block better, and then we need to run better, and we need to throw better that sets up the run. So that's really astute by the head coach, right? But that's that's facts. That's what has to happen. Their run game, they do it several different ways. So we need to make sure that we can get aligned correctly to defend the run. Then at that point, you have to make tackles. You put first thing you got to put yourself in position to make the play. Second thing you got to make the play. And you know their running backs run really hard. They're downhill run football team. And uh, when that happens, you better be ready to go tackle and use the right tackling method. Otherwise, you're going to miss tackles. And, you know, that, that's not pretty when that happens. 
Well, when it comes to your running game, you used a lot of different O-linemen starting, or starting alignments. Do you look to continue that, or do you want to stick with five maybe and, and run with it the rest of the year? Well, Bobby, I'd love to stick with five. I'd love to have five guys, and here we come, but I just don't think we're there yet. So uh, until it, you know, you can make that happen, and I don't think it works. You got to let that happen, and somebody or somebody's got to step up and take control of the position group, and that hasn't happened yet. So I'm hopeful that it does. Um, the sooner the better, but we're gonna have to see. So what have you seen from uh, Kyle Mungai too, and, and his development, kind of progression over the course of the season? Yeah, I think Kyle's improved every step of the way since he's joined our program. Kyle is a legitimate Big Ten back. I think he runs extremely hard. He's decisive. Um, has he made some mistakes? Sure, he has. We all have. But I think his uh, his arrow is up. I think he's a promising a promising uh, running back in this league. Again, I, um, I'll close by saying we have the pen in our hand. We get to write this story. It's up to us to do it. I'd ask that our fans stick stick with us. It's coming. Um, but uh, I know it can get frustrating. No, no one more than us. But I understand when you follow a team, you don't really have control. So all you get to do is see what they do on game day. And we obviously have more control because we're doing it every day. But uh, the arrow on this program's up, and we'll just keep moving. But uh, we need our fans to stick with us. And I, I guarantee our players will continue to work hard. Our coaches will. And then it'll turn. Thanks, guys.